Hey folks, Loki here and today we are going to be talking about stomp versus cleave. Now if you're not familiar with those terms, let me break it down for you. A stomp is where you've got a, an opposition player in down state, um, that little uh, info bar comes up and it says you know press F to finish them and then you do that and it goes through like this little animation of a big wind up, you slam down on them, they're dead, they're back on respawn. That's a stomp. Cleave on the other hand is where you stand there whacking away blindly, you know, until the downed player is completely devoid of health and it sends them back to respawn. Both have the same outcome but they, you know, they have a place and time to be to be used. They're very situational, like a lot of things in PvP. Uh, you can't just say, look, you should always do this or you should always do that. Um, and that's where, you know, your learning curve comes into it and your experience, the more matches you play, the more you see different scenarios of where these things are effective to use. Not only is, you know, Stomp versus Cleave just genuinely situational, it also it can be dependent on what class you play um, or even the class of the downed player. So it's situational, but what I want to try and do is sort of talk you through some of those, you know, typical situations and give you a better idea of when to use what. But what I find, the reason I'm making this particular video is what I have noticed over the last, you know, X amount of time is a distinct absence of stomp in the game and players, you know, very heavily relying entirely on cleave uh, or, you know, in some instances just leaving a player to bleed out. I'll touch on that a bit later too. Now, I... Imagine that it's not that players don't know how to stomp, but that perhaps they don't know how to do a safe stomp. And again, that's something we'll talk about a little bit later later on. For now, let's just look at some of the pros and cons of both stomp and cleave. Now, some people will tell you that to go to the effort of stomping someone, uh, that it is wasting valuable seconds in, in a match because of that, you know, that wind-up animation that it, that it goes through. Now, if, for argument's sake, and this is where it comes in as to what class you're playing, if you're a major damage dealer like a spellbreaker and you've got someone in a down state and you can just go whack, whack, and they're done and dusted, by all means, go ahead and cleave. It's probably quicker than stomping. However, if you are playing a longbow ranger and you're going to be just going pew pew with your number one auto attack, yeah, that's not a good use of your time. So in that instance, yep, the warrior should cleave, but the ranger should probably try and go for the stomp. I'll give you another few examples. Um... If you're in a team fight on, on mid and uh, a player's downed and then a teammate's trying to raise them, this is a really good spot to cleave. Again, if you're playing a class that deals enough damage um, because when you've got someone in down state and their teammate's trying to raise them, the race is on between how quickly you can deal damage as opposed to how much health they can replenish while they're raising them. And the other advantage of cleaving in that situation is that you're not only doing damage to the down player to try and see them off, you've also got the, the reza or the attempted reza in your sights and you can be doing damage on both of them. And Hopefully, you not only finish off the original downed player, you will take the Reza as well, which is, you know, a great outcome for your team. Um, another situation in team fights, and this is where if you've watched my stream highlights or you've watched me live on Twitch, 
you will hear me screaming like a crazy woman, stomp, stomp, oh, for fuck's sake, stomp. Um, and this is when you have opposition players in downstate and you also have your own teammates in downstate. With people ineffectively or inefficiently using cleave, they are losing the opportunity of rallying a downed teammate. If a downed opposition player is someone that your teammate has tagged, like basically they've been doing damage to them that contributed to them being in downstate, when you finish them, like they're dead, go back to respawn, that rallies your teammate and they will be instantly resurrected. So that's where, you know, having someone hitting like a wet noodle to cleave is incredibly frustrating because if they would just do the stomp, bang, bang, player's dead, on respawn, your teammate's back up and you've got an advantage in a continuing team fight. Um, so again, like that's, it's that situation of you've got to look at what is the most advantageous option in this particular scenario. Um, again, now another one, if we're talking about side node fights, uh, I mean, I, I predominantly play Mesma in, in PvP, right? Now I don't do a lot of flat damage. So you'll see that I... More often than not, I opt to use Stomp because I know that if I do that, they will be dead. Um, I don't have that confidence with my ability to deal flat damage. Uh, I won't be able to cleave them fast enough. The exception to that being, if I'm in a 1v1 on side note, whether it's home or far, if the opposing player goes into down state off point, I will sit there, I will stand there just whacking them ever so gently while I'm capping the point because I'm trying to delay and keep them out of the game for as long as possible. So I'll stand there, I'll just keep whacking them, let the point cap, and if they're not dead by the time I've finished capping, then I'll walk over and I'll stomp them and move on. Now, I do that because I know that if I collect, you know, get off point, I'm going to stand there casually capping, all good. If, however, that player goes down and they're on point, as long as they're on point, it doesn't matter that they're in down state, as long as they're on point, that point will stay contested and I can't cap it. So in that instance, I will stomp them straight away because I want to get the cap and get back to my team while, you know, they've got a player out on, on respawn. So as you can see, there's a lot of times, you know, it, it just depends on the situation, what class you play and what class is in downstate. Um, a good example of when I would always use Cleave is against uh, downed thieves. They're tricky little buggers who disappear and teleport and, and do all sorts of things while they're in down state. And so, you know, I can wind up a stomp, you know, two or three times and it's, I'm just not getting anywhere because I can't get that finish on them. So in that situation, it's just, look, just cleave because I know they're going to, that's guaranteed to kill them and I can move on with, move on with the match. Something that, uh, you know, aside from Stomp or Cleave, something that I've seen a lot more of over, you know, probably the last mm, three months or so is players just moving on and leaving a player in downstate to, they assume, bleed out. Now, this is this is my personal opinion on it. I don't I, I don't assert that it's right or, or wrong in any particular way, but this is just how I how I approach it in game. You need to kind of figure out if that's right for you. When you just leave someone to bleed out, you need to be pretty damn sure that they are in fact going to bleed out. Because once you run away from them, you don't have them in your line of sight. 
you're not going to, you know, it's just out of sight, out of mind kind of thing, you know, and if you're not sure that they're definitely going to bleed out, you don't necessarily know that you have scored an advantage for your team. Um, I like to know that they're dead, like they're dead, dead, they're on respawn and, and move on. Um, you've also got to be aware that, um, you know, every class has the ability to self-res. It's the number four skill for everyone um, in downed state. You need to know that they're not going to use that. Now, two classes in particular that you don't want to leave, or one class in particular, I would never leave a ranger to bleed out because they have two self-heal skills. They have their number four bandage that everyone's got and then they've got a number three skill, which is that they're pet that heals them. And I can tell you from personal experience of maining a ranger for years, I can't tell you how many times my pet has got me out of trouble because they can come over and raise me. So I'm not saying don't ever leave players to bleed out, but be cautious. Make sure they are definitely going to bleed out because you don't want that decision to come back and, you know, bite you in the, in the ass. Earlier I mentioned about safe stomping um, and how you safe stomp, basically all it means is that you're avoiding whatever it is that the downstate player has that can stop you from completing the stomp. Uh, for example, necros can fear you away. Um, a ranger can interrupt you. Um, you know, the, every class has some means of delaying or stopping you from completing a stomp. Now, the best way to protect against that is to give yourself stability. As a um, Mesmer, I rely on a trait from the Chaos line called Bountiful Illusionment. And what that does, it attaches stability. It gives me, I think it's um, a, a second and a bit of stability when I activate a Shatter. And what you'll see if you watch any of the stream highlights or you watch me live on Twitch, when I go to do a stomp, I will hit a shatter and that's to give me stability so that I can effectively complete the stomp without being interrupted or having it evaded by the downed player. Every class has a skill or a trait or both that will provide stability in order for you to complete a safe stomp. Now, in the description, um, I've given you a, a list of skills, a, a skill for each class that you can use. Um, as I said, I mean, I rely on, as a Mesma on uh, the, the Chaos trait line, and I use something from that. Uh, it's up to you to look further into your build to discover, you know, if there's a trait that synergizes with that. Um, or, you know, something that will help with cleaving quicker or whatnot. But, you know, a safe stomp, it, I mean, we use the word safe for, for the very well. Like it's, it's a safe bet. You know, give yourself stability, do the stomp, they're dead, move on, and, you know, and we're all good. So that's, you know, that's how you do a safe stomp. Um, don't take the list of skills that I've given you as, you know, exhaustive. I would encourage anyone who's wanting to get better at PvP, like any of these videos that I put together, they're, they're just the, sort of the first part of it. It's just trying to make you aware of different aspects of the game. It's then up to you to find out how best to use that um, in-game. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or you'd like to suggest a topic for a future video, please leave that for me in the comments and make sure you subscribe so you'll know when I have a new video out. For now, stay slinky and I hope I see you in the mists.